That's a lot of rum. <clears throat> Welcome to the Fantasy Forecast with Grindberg and Biggs. He is Grindberg. I am Biggs. Hey, uh, if you go, you board an airplane and you put your luggage in the overhead compartment, what's the next thing you do? You close the overhead compartment. No, you sit down. <sighs> uh, <clears throat> you're a race car driver and you pull up to the line, the white line, and the announcer says, gentlemen, what's the next S word? Start your engines. It starts and sits. Let's go. Let's go. And it's uh, week seven, and we're already, you know, 35% done the season now, Biggs. Oh, and uh, 17 divided by seven. 17 divided by seven is approximately 2.4386. That didn't give me my answer. Alexa, <laughs> what percentage of 17 is six? 35.29%. Dang it. Good math, Greinberg. Uh, what did it say there? Did it say 35.29%? Nice. That was a guess. I guessed right. That's part of your studs. That's your, yeah. that, that leads off your studs and duds. Yeah. Nail okay. Percentage. Yeah. So last week we told everybody to start two players and sit two players. And now we are owning those sits and starts. So mm. I'm going to start us off here. Uh, I told everybody to start Jalen Tolbert, which was a Dudley call because he only went four for 43 he had a very small target share compared to the last week so uh jalen tolbert was a dudley call but uh my next one was a uh, more of a studly call i told everybody to start stefan diggs after you know the nico collins injury six for 77 and a touchdown Another studly call was sitting Amari Cooper. Uh, his last game as a Cleveland Brown, he went four for 42. And then Brian Robinson was a wash. I told you to sit him, but he didn't end up playing. Now, Biggs, another week in the books. Uh, I think you hit a couple nails on the head with this one. How did you do last week? Oh, I had four nails. Uh, I said start Brock Bowers. He finishes tight end five. I said, start Chuba Hubbard. He finishes RB18. That's definitely RB2 territory. And I said, sit Rico Dowdle. And he finished outside of the top 24, uh, which means that he wasn't RB1 or 2 worthy. Uh, and, uh, and then I said, sit all of the Buffalo wide receivers. And the, none of them scored 10 points. So I nailed everything. I had my first perfect week. Congratulations, man. Let's keep the let's keep the momentum rolling in week seven. Hours for me. Thank you. There you go, man. <laughs> All right, man. Um, I'm gonna start us off with There's my so first so much rum in that pina colada. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You better watch his keyboard in points <sighs> after Thursday because I bet you they'll be a bit sticky with rum colada or whatever the hell he's drinking right now, because uh, I'm sure it's not very weak. But what's strong here, Biggs, is I think uh, Deontay Johnson this week is another strong call. Another standout performance last week. He's an excellent start in your lineups. The Panthers are facing off against the Commanders, who have one of the league's most vulnerable secondaries. Johnson has a golden opportunity to once again finish as a top 10 wide receiver. His recent resurgence, particularly since Andy Dalton took over at quarterback, positions in him as a must-start wide receiver to this week. The Commanders' pass defense has notoriously been weak, allowing numerous big plays and high yardage totals to opposing receivers with their secondary struggling johnson will exploit this matchup potentially racking up significant yardage and additional scoring opportunities giving the commanders tendencies to give up points to wideouts it's reasonable to expect johnson to capitalize deontay johnson set up for a big week his recent performances favorable matchup and role as the primary target in that panthers offense I think he's got the makings as a top 10 wide receiver once again. I love, love, love Deontay Johnson this week, except for the fact that he did not practice on Wednesday and yep. he did not practice on Thursday. So you need to monitor that situation because if he doesn't practice on Friday, there's a good chance that he's not going to, he's not going to start. He's not going to play. Um, what do you do? Go grab Xavier Liga. If he's available, stash him. And if 
Deontay Johnson doesn't play, throw throw Liga in your lineup. There you go. All right. Who do you got as your first start, Biggs? Uh, my first start is kind of a combo meal. Um, Would you like that super size, sir? Yes. Uh, Brian Robinson and Jane Daniels. Brian Robinson, another guy that you want to monitor. If he doesn't play, <laughs> you didn't listen to me. Um, <clears throat> and Jane Daniels. So Brian Robinson has an incredible matchup coming up this week. Uh, when we look at the details, uh, the best matchup for running backs in all of the NFL, the Carolina defense allows 46 yards more than the average against uh, running backs or, or on the ground. Um, so if he plays, uh, he's going to get quite a run. On the other hand, Jaden Daniels is a scampering running quarterback. He will have a lot of open space against that Carolina defense. Now, I know a lot of you, if you have Jaden Daniels, you all you drafted somebody ahead of him. You might have another quarterback on your roster that you've been thinking, should I play him? No. You put Jaden Daniels in there. He is he's right now the second best scrambling or running quarterback in the NFL behind Lamar Jackson. You throw him in your lineup, he's gonna be good. He's also going to have that passing upside. Uh, start Brian Brian Robinson at running back. And if you have Jaden Daniels as another running back and aren't already starting him anyway, start him over whoever's in there. Yeah. Super smash. All right. My next start here is a guy that just wait, 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 got wait. a what's real up? quickly. I, yeah. I just want I just want to I just want to clear this up. It's on the show sheet. Um do we have two Patriots in a row? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And I could add a third one. I know. Go go ahead with yours. Go ahead with yours. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to talk about Demario Douglas becoming a compelling start this week. Following Drake May's impressive debut with the Patriots starting quarterback in May's first game, Douglas made a significant impact, finishing with six receptions, 92 yards, and a touchdown on nine targets. This performance earned him 18 half PPR points and solidified his role as a key player in that Patriots offense. In the Patriots' previous matchup against the Titans, Douglas led the team in targets, receptions, receiving yards. His 35-yard touchdown while coming in garbage time marked a pivotal moment for him as a second-year player, demonstrating his ability to deliver in crucial situations. The consistency in his performance, even during challenging game scenarios, highlights his potential as a reliable playmaker going forward. Now, looking ahead into week seven here, he faces a Jaguars defense that has struggled significantly this season, allowing an average of 30 points per game. This matchup presents an excellent opportunity for Douglas to build off his recent success. The Jaguars' defensive weaknesses create a chance for May and Douglas to exploit mismatches, and this will lead to substantial production for this young wide receiver. So, Demario Douglas is ready to make a splash. Get ready for some serious pop in your lineup. Um, get, it? get it? Yeah. Pop? Pop. Because pop. pop Douglas. Yeah. It's very, very clever. Um, when you are very clever when you're on the mic. <laughs> oh, <the> mic. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, I'm, I'm coming at you with another combo meal. Um, I can't believe this, but we're I'm going with another package deal. <laughs> and we already said start Demario Douglas. I'm starting Hunter Henry and Drake May. Boom. This Jacksonville Jag, and it's a good thing that uh Schultz is in the back digging around through like boxes and stuff, and he's not he's playing with his dangus right um, now. The, oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's got his Schultz's, dengus out. Sh Schultz is in the back playing with his dengus. Um, <clears throat> the Jacksonville Jaguars are terrible. Uh, they are the, the best defense to play against. If you are a fantasy, uh, if you're if you're in the NFL and you want to score fantasy points for your guy, um, 
they allow the third most points to tight ends per game. And, uh, and they also are very much at the bottom against quarterbacks and against wide receivers. They're the worst against fantasy court. They're, they allow the most fantasy points to quarterbacks. And they, I think they, they're also third. They allow the third most against wide receivers. Um, second most, sorry. So they're, they allow the most points against fantasy quarterbacks. They allow the second most against fantasy wide receivers. There's your Demario Douglas play. And they allow the third most of tight ends, two tight ends. And there's your Hunter Henry play. Smash the Patriots against the Jaguars this week. Um, and don't tell Schultz we said this. Let's tell him anyway. We're going to tell him on a place. Yeah, I'm going to gonna post it right after oh. this. On you know, we, should do, we, should, we, should, we should make Schultz uh, clip the shorts. Let's do it. Let's do it. And then we'll post them here. We are here. We are here. FantasySportsAdvice.com offering the best fantasy sports social media platform. Why join endless Discord communities or the trolls of Reddit? <laughs> Fantasy Sports Advice is a community designed to help you win with 24-7 support. Go to FantasySportsAdvice.com and become a pro member for unlimited access. Again, go to FantasySportsAdvice.com today. And if you want to know where to go or how to get the Fantasy Sports Advice Network, just scan the QR code. That brings up my dot, dot .cards account. Uh, big boned FFB, or you can just go to dot dot cards at big or dot dot cards forward slash big boned FFB. There is a link to FSAN there, along with our all of our shows, uh, all of the the platforms that Grindberg and I work for. Um, so do that and and uh, and go get your pro membership today. Let's go get your pro membership today, folks. And uh, do you is is there like a big storm brewing up north? Uh no. There's uh there's there's minus uh weather coming though. Yeah. Uh cuz my girlfriend might not be able to get out of work on she not might not be able to she might get weathered in uh when she tries to leave work on Monday. Oh no. That sucks. Well, hopefully yeah. hopefully some travel uh situation. I mean, as long as she can be safe, you know, it's better be safe on the ground than uh you know in the air. All right. Let's move on. To some sits, Biggs. Uh, let's hear your first sit of the week. Um, I have a sit. I put my sits in, in the show sheet, but I can't move the show sheet down by um, telekinesis. So um, let me... Hey, it's a twofer. Um, once again, sit all of the Buffalo wide receivers. And apparently this is going to be on... I mean, we're on notice to do this until such time as we see an Amari Cooper breakout, a little bit of, of improvement. Um, we talked about the best possible matchup in terms of yards allowed for running backs, and that's Brian Robinson against Carolina, and the best possible matchup for quarterbacks and wide receivers, pass catchers, um, and that's the the New England Patriots against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, on the, on the flip side of that, the absolute worst – matchup for wide receivers and quarterbacks this week is the Buffalo Bills going up against Tennessee. Tennessee has a studly defense. Uh, they allow 73 yards fewer per game than the average defense. And that is by far, that's like 30 points fewer than, than the next team. Um, they're going to shut down the wide receiver core of these Buffalo Bills. Is Don Kincaid gonna gonna be able to like get loose? Yeah, maybe. Is James Cook possibly uh, in the passing game? Maybe. Um, I don't like Josh Allen this week as the QB one. Uh, he's not QB one in my rankings, and I hate Buffalo's wide receivers right now. Now, Amari Cooper is going to be a nice influx into their system. It's going to help Josh Allen a lot. Josh Allen's going to help Amari Cooper a lot. Um, but Curtis Samuel hasn't been what he what we thought he was, uh, or at least I, I anticipated he was going to be. Khalil Shakir has been fine but muted by injuries, and Keon Coleman is no Xavier worthy. Sorry, Buffalo, um, mm. but there's no better indicator of the fact that the Buffalo Bills have given Keon Coleman a six-game audition and went, you know what, 
we really need to pivot. And they go out and they trade for Amari Cooper. That means Keon Coleman is dead. So you sit all Buffalo Bills wide receivers this week. Okay. Now, my first sit here is going to, you know, make me eat crow. Because every time I talk about this guy, he makes me eat crow, whether it's good or bad. So I'm going to continue to talk about George Pickens. And I'm going to tell you to sit him this week. And you know what? This might be the week he actually goes off because he's getting Russell Wilson. And uh, I'm just a little reluctant. Uh, zero touchdowns and only one game surpassing 15 fantasy points this season. His performance has been disappointing as the Steelers, they prepare. They face the New York Jets this week who rank second in the league against pass. This matchup further complicates Pickens' outlook given the challenges he's faced as a player best left on your bench. Adding Pickens struggles in his recent change at quarterback. Now we're looking at Russell Wilson to make his first start. It's reasonable to expect some growing pains here as he develops chemistry with his new receiving core. Facing a tough Jets defense will likely take some time for Wilson to find his rhythm, making it even more challenging for Pickens to contribute meaningfully in a matchup that could be more about survival than success. Pickens may struggle to see enough targets to be fantasy relevant, but I like the overall optimism about Pickens' future. If Russell Wilson is the quarterback there, I think that is an increased value for, uh, for, for George Pickens. But this week, I just think it's a really tough matchup. Up. I'd be starting George Pickens everywhere else, but this week specifically, and with the change at quarterback, I think this week will be the growing pain week, and then we should see George Pickens start to flourish uh, moving forward. What are your thoughts on that, Biggs? 100% agree. Now, you and I talked a lot about George Pickens, literally for the last 14 months, but <laughs> I'm speaking specifically more about this summer. Uh, yeah. You and I were both very, very high on Pickens. The fact that, A, he was going to become the alpha in that wide receiver room with Deontay Johnson leaving. B, he was going to have a sudden influx of catchable balls that were going to be thrown to him where uh, he was among the, the league leaders in uncatchable target rate last year because his quarterbacks were just so god-awful. And Russ Wilson was 100 uh, catchable balls better than the quarterbacks that in, – in in fewer chances than the quarterbacks that that uh, Pickens – I mean, these are stats that I, I pounded all summer. We thought that Pickens was going to have a great year. Here we are entering week seven, and he has come up short of expectations. But guess what? Justin Fields has been throwing him the ball in an Art Smith offense. He hasn't had the benefit that we talked about. So all you people out there in fantasy land that drafted Pickens because we said he was going to have a good year – that good year may be coming because finally Russell Wilson is going to be out on the field. This was the vision of the Pittsburgh Steelers in the first place. This was our vision for George Pickens in the first place. And, uh, and it starts this week. Yes. Yes. It's going to happen eventually here. Okay. Biggs, what's your sit number two? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I like another combo meal. Please. Um, <clears throat> you know, you might think, well, every time he, he's supposed to pick a player, he picks a group of players. He's just being lazy. I'm not being lazy. I'm doing nope. the homework, and that's leading me down multiple roads, not just one, and I'm giving you all those roads. This week, my number one sit is – or my number two sit is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers running back room. Don't start any of them. Rashad White is banged up. Don't start him. Sean Tucker had a great breakout game last week. Don't start him. And Bucky Irving, he's been kind of making noise all season. Don't start him. You know why? Because all three of them are going to be running back by committee, and we're, you're just going to be putting one guy in to hope that he is the one of three that has the big breakout game. That's not a situation that you want to be in. You want to go with the alpha dog. You want to go with the clear cut number one. You want to go with the guy who you know has the job not trying to predict who of the three you think has a better path to the better game of the three. That's not winning fantasy football. That's losing fantasy football because your 66% chance of being wrong is too high to trust. Don't start Rashad White, even though you drafted him high. I love Rashad White. I have him everywhere. 
I'm not starting him this week, even if he is healthy, because those other two guys are nipping at his heels. It's not a situation I want any of my players to be in. When it's the clear-cut number one, you play him. That's why you don't play Javante Williams or Jaleel McLaughlin, because you don't know which one of those guys is going to be the alpha dog. But you do play Jordan Mason, because Jordan Mason is going to get the bulk of the carries. You stay away from situations like that. And over the course of the last three weeks, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have created a situation just like that. I'm sitting them all. Mm -hmm. Me too. Until some clarity happens there. And uh, there may not be. Could be the three-headed monster from here on out there, Biggs. My hope is that this week, Rashad White rushes for 100 yards and a touchdown, leaves the other two guys in the dust, and we go back to status quo in Tampa Bay. Is that going to happen? I don't think so, but it's what I want. Me too. All right. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys to also sit a running back here and he's part of the committee and he's facing a matchup against the Minnesota Vikings defense that ranks second in the league against the run. Jameer Gibbs had a solid performance in week six. He rushed for 63 yards, adding 28 and receiving uh, in a blowout win over the Cowboys. His opportunities are set to dwindle against a tougher opponent. Given the Vikings' defensive prowess, this matchup makes Gibbs a risky start for fantasy managers. Montgomery's recent contract extension further solidifies his status within their offensive game plan. Jared Goff loves Montgomery, his toughness, his contributions. It's evident, and uh, I just like that situation here. And against uh, Vikings defense is known for the ability to stifle the run game, making it difficult for any running back to find success. The Lions are facing a formidable opponent. The likelihood of a split backfield being productive decreases significantly. Gibbs' effectiveness may be hampered by the Lions, uh, you know, in a close game here. So I'm um, I'm just gonna be cautious in in, in Jameer Gibbs. I think he's down for a, a a slower game. Obviously, it's gonna be hard to sit him in your roster, but just temper your expectations against a very very tough Vikings run defense. Yeah, and the only way that I would say, like, I'm hesitant to agree with you is the fact that Jameer Gibbs is a receiving back. But who, which team, which defense has allowed the fewest points in terms of uh, or, uh, the fewest number of receiving touchdowns to running backs? Uh, Minnesota Vikings have only allowed one. Chiefs have allowed zero, Falcons zero, Eagles zero. But that might just be because nobody's trying to do it. Mm-hmm. The Minnesota Vikings have allowed only one receiving touchdown to running backs. They've only allowed 162 receiving yards to running backs. It's among the lower in the lead or lower in the league. Um, I, I, I really, really, really don't want to sit Jameer Gibbs. If I have to make the choice of Gibbs or, or Montgomery, I'm definitely sitting Montgomery over just because in PPR, you can get a few extra points from Jameer mm-hmm. Gibbs on on those receptions but um i mean we're, we're talking about uh a per game average of 4.8 receptions to running backs by the vikings that's five points that's not a big ceiling nine points total uh is what they allow every week to running backs regardless of whether they're an on, an on the ground or through the air running back um i hate it i hate it so much i hate it so much why do you have to be so good vikings why do you have to snuff my Jameer Gibbs shares? I, I named teams after him. And you got to go ahead and make him irrelevant this week. Curse you, Minnesota. Curse you, Jameer Biggs. Wait, that's you. I don't that's curse me. you. I, I love you, man. I love me too. All right, folks. That's it for our start and sit show headed into week seven. Hopefully, you know, your lineups are set here and you're ready to rock. Uh, Stay tuned. Uh, We'll be back tomorrow for our injury update show. Uh, Marcus is on his, you know, honeymoon this weekend. So Biggs and I will be running solo again, but uh, he'll be back next weekend, every other week uh, as the season progresses. Uh, Biggs, got anything to say for our viewers before we uh, head them in as this Thursday night game is uh, in full tilt? Yeah, that's the only reason to get married is honeymoon. Did that just come out of my mouth out loud? I thought I was just thinking it. (laughs) We hope you win. We hope you win. Peace.